Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we're going to be doing paper two from the ICT IGCC course. So paper two is a practical paper, which is two hours and 30 minutes long. We are doing October, November 2021, and we will be doing document production in this video. So paper two also consists of data manipulation, which is databases, mail merge and PowerPoint presentations. So to get started, what we need to do first of all is to check the source files. Okay, so we should have 10 files in total. And the files include RTF files, uh, CSV files, and there's one JPEG file. So let's go to the source folder. Yep, the files look the same. Let me just check the first file, ends in champs. Yes. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to set up the evidence document. So let's open up this file here. I think I've got it open already. Yep, so you can go to your source folder, you can locate the evidence document, and then you can open up the evidence document. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to make sure your name, center number, and candidate number appears on every page of this document. So we can include this into the header. So if you go to insert, and when I'm always inserting the header, I always choose the option which gives me three columns. So I'm going to write my name here. Okay, and for centre number, I will we'll use 5678, and for candidate number, 1234. Okay, 5678 for the centre number, and then for the candidate number, 1234. There's no specifics on formatting, but the only thing that they're asking is, we have this information appearing on every page. So I think it's fine to include your name, centre number and candidate number in a header like this. Okay, save this document into your work area as this file name basically, followed by your um, candidate number. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this, but I'm going to change the last four numbers to 1234. Obviously if you guys are in the exam you can't copy and paste, so make sure you enter the file name exactly as it's shown, including any capital letters. Um, so let me go ahead and save this. Okay. Into the same source folder. And what you need to do is you need to save it as a Word document. Okay. So guys, my computer has been a little bit on the slow side these last few days. I'm not sure what's going on. Right, so we're going to save as a Word document. Let me just enter in the name that was given to us, or let me copy and paste it again. There we go. And then we can just change the last three num last four numbers to include your candidate name. Save. Press OK. And you can see we've got a new file name here at the top and it's been saved as a Word document file. OK, done. You will need your evidence document during the examination to place screenshots uh, when required. OK, so that's that line. OK, task 2 document. OK. You are going to edit a newsletter. A corporate house style must be used. Three paragraph styles have already been created. An additional paragraph style must be created and applied to the document as instructed. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do is open up this file here. So n2102vetnews.rtf. So we can go to the folder and find the RTF file. Yep, this, this file here. Enable editing. Okay, if you click on here, you should see we have some styles which have been created already. So we've got the body style, subtitle, and title style. So we've got three styles which have been created so far. The page setup is set to A4, portrait orientation with two centimeter margins. Do not make any changes to these settings. That's fine. One less thing for me to do. 
and save the document into your work area in the format of the software you're using with the file name newsletter. Okay, so let me just copy that. Again, when you're saving um, your work with a particular file name, make sure you spell it properly and if you see capital letters, use capital letters as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file, save as, we want to save into the same folder with the name given and we need to save it as a Word document. So we're saving it in the format of the file, save. Okay, so for the first evidence what we need to do is we need to place in your evidence document a screenshot to show the file has been saved. Make sure there's evidence of the file type. So there's my file. I'm just going to go like this. I want to show the file type. And I'm going to use the snipping tool. So let me open up the snipping tool. There we go. Okay, so let's just take the print screen showing where it's been saved and the file name and the file type. So let me just copy and paste this into my evidence documents as the first piece of evidence. Okay, so let's now look at question two. So place in the header automated page numbers center aligned. So anytime I'm inserting a header or footer, I always choose again the option which gives me three columns. So what we need to do is automated page numbers center aligned. So we can click in the center option here. We can go to page numbers, current position, and then we can select the first option. I don't think we need these two options here. Um, let me double check. Yep, so we could get rid of um, any other placeholders, including the header or footer areas. So let's get rid of the one on the right side. Just uh, cut it out or just delete it, it's up to you. Okay, so that's the um, header done. Now, in the footer, um, we need to have the text edited by followed by space and your name, sentence number and candidate number right aligned. Yep, that's the only thing. So let me go to the footer now. So insert footer again, three columns. Let me just have a quick look. So place in the footer the text edited by followed by space, your name, centre number and candidate number right aligned. So let me copy this text first of all. Again, make sure you include no spelling mistakes, you include capital letters when shown. So space, I'm going to write my name. Okay, let's see. Comma, centre number. So for center number, I'll use 5678, comma, and I think it was center number and candidate number, right aligned, yeah. So let me just put 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we don't need to have this or this. Okay, so that's been done. And before we move forward, make sure all alignments match the page margins. So what that means is if we close the head and foot of view and go to print preview. So if we just click on print, we can check the preview out in a second and hopefully the margins will match up. So you can see this is a head and foot at the bottom and it matches up with the page margins. So this is the end of the footer and it matches up. Yep, that's fine. Just save the changes. Headers and footers are displayed on all pages. Yeah, I saw that as well in the print preview. Okay, so let's keep, keep going. 
So for question three, create and store the following style based on the default paragraph style. So we need to create a new style called VE dash subhead. So to create a new style, you can click on this little icon here, which opens up this window, which shows that we have three styles already. And then you can click on here to create a new style. Okay, so when this opens up, uh, we can have a look to see what we're going to do. So the style is going to be, um, or the font style will be sans serif, so we can go for Arial. So let me just first of all enter the name for this new style. Okay. So the font style sans serif, so we can choose Arial. If it was serif, you could have gone for Times New Roman. So I'd like to choose between either Arial if it's sans serif. Okay, if it was serif, I would have gone for Times New Roman. Okay, the size of the font is going to be 14. The alignment is going to be center. So it's going to be center aligned. And the enhancement is going to be bold and italic. Okay. Single line spacing and six point space after each line. So if you go to format paragraph now, um, yep, we've got single line spacing. And what we want is a six point space after each line. Okay, so you can see there should be a little gap. Press OK. And I'm just going to double check. So Arial, 14, center aligned, bold, italic, done. Okay, I know the first paragraph has changed, or this part's changed, it's fine. Uh, I think we can apply some formatting later. Okay, so that's done. For evidence to two, place in your evidence document a screenshot to show these settings have been defined for the VE subhead style. Make sure this style is based on the default paragraph style. Okay, so let me just check something really quickly. So we'll have a look at body. Yes, yeah, a style type paragraph. Yeah, that's fine. Just want to check I did the same thing. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on format paragraph. So for my screenshot, I'm going to include this part and this part as well. So let me just place or oh, snip this into my evidence document. There we go. So it should be a nice clear screenshot okay done okay so question four the style name ve body has already been created stored and applied to the body text in the document we need to modify the ve body style so only the following formatting is applied okay so let's open up this VE body and what do we need to do so the font style is serif so we can stick with Times New Roman the font size is 11 the alignment is justified so 11 is fine the font align uh, the alignment is justified so straight on both sides so far nothing needs to be changed no enhancements yeah nothing's been selected line spacing is 1.5 so what you can do select this option here or you can go to format paragraph 1.5 line spacing so it just puts the space in between each line okay no space before and six space uh, six point space after so let's include that okay press ok Press OK and we can see some line spacing. Okay, 
what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm just going to click on clear and just apply that again yeah okay that's fine right so that's question four done at the start of the document above the subtitle quarterly newsletter enter the title vocational education and training so again guys when you are entering this text make sure you're not including any spelling mistakes so let me just press enter to move that down above we've got space now and we can insert the text obviously guys you'd have to type this in during the exam so just make sure there's no spelling mistakes when you're typing okay and what now what we need to do is modify modify the VE title style so the style name VE title has already been created and stored modify the VE title style so only the following formatting is applied so let's open up uh, the VE title style and the font style is sans serif so we can go for Arial The font size is 22 and is center aligned. Uh, bold and italic. Well, no underline, so we can take that off. Uh, single line spacing and no space before or after. So we can go to format, paragraph, no space before or after, and single line spacing. Okay, so for evidence three, place a screenshot into your evidence document showing the settings for the VE title style. So let me just take a screenshot now. So again, make sure it's a nice clear screenshot that you're taking. Let me copy. Okay, you've got to close it down and for evidence free paste yeah okay done maybe I just have to move this title down as well so yeah so so far we got a screenshot showing that we saved the work as a word document in our source folder um, then the first style okay and then the second style has been evidenced as well. Okay, let me save the changes. Done. Okay, apply the amended VE title style to the text entered in step five. So that was probably the title text. Yes, vocational education the training. Uh, let's have a quick look. Yeah. So let's just highlight and click on VE title. And let me double check. Sans serif 22 center bolt. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, select the sub the subheading apprenticeship update and the following text up to and including the paragraph ending can benefit business. So let me just find this subheading first of all. So um, so apprenticeship update. So select the subheading apprenticeship update and the following text up to and including the paragraph ending in can benefit business. So this is the start point. And uh, can yeah, so we need to basically highlight from here to here. And what's gonna happen is we are going to be formatting the text that's been highlighted into yeah let's read the question change the page layout so only this text is displayed in two columns of equal width width and one centimeter space between them okay right so if you go to layout columns more columns select two columns and then one centimeter space in between Okay, 
guys I'm not sure if you can tell by my voice but, but my voice is um, it's not it doesn't sound its normal self um, obviously I'm not being well um, in the last few days um, on the road to recovery so if you are thinking um, his voice does sound a little bit different um, it's yes because I've not been well but hopefully it's not going to stop me from finishing off this video right so that's that done done Okay, for question nine, apply dash style bullets to the text from construction and building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for that text. Um, so if I go to home, find, and let me just enter that in. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to be applying some bullet points here. So let's have a quick look. So construction and building to transportation and logistics. Okay, so let's highlight this text here. And what we want to do is we want to make um, dashed bullets. So if I go to um, the option for the bullets, which is here, uh, I can't see the dash, so I might need to click on define new bullet. Okay, we can select symbol. And let's see if we can find a dash. So there we go. I think I've used it in the past. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to do. The bullets are aligned at the left margin. So what we need to do now, you can see there's an indentation. Uh, we need to get rid of the indentation. So we can go to a power graph and we can just remove the indentation. So you can see it's aligned at the left of the margins. And the list is in single line spacing with, with no space in between the lines single and there's a six point space after the last item in the list okay if I just press OK you can see there's a six point space between each item in the list we only want to have it after the last item so I'm just going to get rid of this for now okay and what you can do is a little cheat to be honest you can just press enter and let me just double click and just change that to six Okay, so there we go. So we've got six points space after the last bullet point in that list. Okay, so that's that part done. Question 10. Identify four subheadings in a document and apply the VE subhead style to each one. Okay. So the VE subhead style should be... Uh, not that one. Yeah, it should be this one, sans serif, 14 center, bold and italic. So let's find the four subheadings. I think that's one of them, apprenticeship update. Uh, let me double check. It should be bold and italic, sans serif, 14 center. Yep, that looks fine to me. Subhead, that's the second one. looks like the third one and so that was the third one and this is the fourth one okay so we've got four subheads which have been applied or oh, so uh, sorry four subhead heading titles okay in there right um, okay we've done that now um, yeah now for question 11 using the data in the file n2102 starts.csv create a pie chart to compare each level for the year 2019 to 2020 only so let's open up this file first of all so ending in starts this one here so obviously uh, when you click on the file it should open up an excel and whilst that's opening up um, I'm just going to save my changes to my word document so we want to create a pie chart okay to compare each level so let's have a quick look let me just continue that okay so
yeah that's fine so my uh, antivirus software is just I don't know what it's doing right anyway so I've got my pie chart open now so what we need to do is we need to create a pie chart to compare each level for the year 2019 and 2020 only okay so it's probably going to be these values here okay from this year we don't need a total okay so what I'm going to do is just highlight these three cells and we want to compare the levels okay let me double check yep compare each level so I'm going to also highlight these three cells as well so if I press down on control I can highlight these three cells like this and then if I go to insert we can select a pie chart like this okay so whilst that's loading up um, there's my pie chart okay what do we need to do to the pie chart so format the chart to display a title so again when you guys enter this text make sure there's no spelling mistakes you include capital letters when shown so let me just double click to add a title okay for each sector only the level and percentage sector labels so for each sector only the level and percentage sector labels okay so let's have a look so if I just right click and if I click on plus data labels if I just click on data labels here so and go to more options okay so what do we need to display we need to display um, for each section for each sector only the level so we can have the category name okay not the value we want the percentage as well okay and make sure the sector labels are displayed in full with no overlap so we can put these on the outside so position let me just see outside end yeah that's fine I'm happy with that so what we have is for each sector the level so that's high higher level intermediate level advanced level and then we have the percentage as well okay that's that done just close that what we don't want is the legend so we can delete the legend okay and I'm going to copy this now because I think we are going to be inserting this into the word document okay so insert the chart after the paragraph ending let me just actually first of all find out where this text is so find okay so what do we need to do we need to insert uh, the chart after the paragraph and then outnumbered those at intermediate level make sure the chart and all data fits within the column so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this after this chart so let me just paste it in and we need to make sure it fits within the columns let me try to paste it in again because it doesn't look right to me If I right click perhaps and have a look at these options here. Um, Ready? Okay, I'm just going to try to format the title or move this box so there's no overlap. Or maybe if I just increase the size of this. There we go. I think that's okay, isn't it? So, what I'm trying to do, ensure there's no overlap. Um, okay there we go so insert the chart after the paragraph ending make sure the chart and all data fits within the column so that's fine actually guys what I'm going to do I'm going to try one more thing because this pie chart still doesn't look right to me so let me try one more thing I'm going to delete it and let me just copy and paste it again um, just 
make it a little bit smaller before I copy and paste it. Okay. So copy. And this time what I'm going to try is to paste it in as a picture. Okay, that looks a bit better. But obviously we need to make sure it fits within the column. Yeah, and I think that's much better to be honest to what I did before. So let me save this changes now. Okay. That's done. Okay, so guys, if you're not happy with what you've done, you know, you can always go back and you can redo things. Um, yep, yeah, so that's. I'm happy with what I've done now. And uh, now let's move on to question 14. So import the image n210 to transfer.jpg and place it in a paragraph beginning. The vocational skills. Okay, so let me find this um, paragraph. Okay, so we need to place this at the beginning. Okay, so let's first of all import this picture now. So um, let me just click in be before that text. To insert a picture, go to insert picture from this device. Go to your source folder. Here's a picture here. Okay, and what do we need to do to this picture? Uh, let's have a quick look at the question paper. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what we're going to be doing. Okay, I'm just having a quick look. Here we are. Okay, so rotate. So that's 90. And I'll do it again. And there we go. So we've got skills, abilities, and knowledge. Okay, so I I basically rotated it twice, um, 90 degrees. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, format the image. So it's been resized with 3 centimeters uh, aspect or oh, three centimeters wide with the aspect ratio maintained so if I double click on the picture we can just resize this to three centimeters wide and you can see the height is automatically changing as well okay the text wraps around the image so if I go to wrap text and select tight you can see it wraps around the image like this okay it is aligned to the left of the column and to the top of the paragraph starting the vocational skills so yep yeah, you can see the picture is on the left aligned to the top of the paragraph and you can see the, the grid lines the green lines shows me it's to the left of the column and it's to the top as well okay let me save the changes and that's all been done now okay Right, so format only the paragraph that starts the 46 word skills competition. So in this example, guys, we are using um, the find tool quite a lot to find specific pieces of text. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Format only the paragraph that starts the 46 word skills competition so that the text is indented by one centimeter from both left and right hand margins. Okay, so we can just highlight the text. We can go to paragraph, and it's at one centimeter from both the left and yep. Yeah, so we can insert this by one centimeter. Sorry, guys, that's my son in the background. If you can hear him, um, okay, I think he's playing with his little cars. Um, okay, so. Once you've indented the text by one centimeter from both left and right hand margins, we have to display an external border which is three to four points and it's black. So let me just press OK first of all. So you can see the indent on either side. Let's add a border. Uh, let's go to borders and shading. So we want to add a box. Three to four points, so that's fine and has a light gray shading 10 to 25 percentage okay so we can go to shading we can select uh, 
Yeah, that's 15%. Great. Done. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so the next thing is we have to spell check and proofread a document. So let me just check to see if there's any spelling um, problems. Um, so spelling and grammar. So sometimes I use the search to search for something in particular. So spelling and grammar, or you can go to review. Uh, you can see spelling and grammar here as well. So let's see if there's any spelling mistakes that need to be fixed. Let's get rid of this box here. Don't think there is any spelling mistakes. Let me just have a, just have a quick look. Oh yes, there's a few there, but I don't think there's spelling mistakes. Let me just have a quick look again. So spelling and grammar. Okay, I think I'm just going to uh, ignore that for maths. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, so I think the spellings is fine. I don't, I didn't really see any spellings. So guys, make sure before you print, um, the best thing to do is to check your work in a print preview. So um, if you go to File, Print, Preview, um, it's three pages long. Okay. There will be obvious spelling mistakes. You'll see like a little red mark line underneath a spelling, and it'll be an obvious spelling mistake. Um, not something that's you know spelt correctly in one country and then incorrectly in different countries like American or British spellings. If there is a spelling mistake, it's going to be something that's fairly obvious. So before we print, let's have a look at these requirements. The list, chart, and paragraph with the outside border are not split over columns or pages. So let's have a quick look. Yes, yeah, so a list is in one column. The chart is in one column. Okay, and this is in one column as well, so that's fine. Uh, there's no widows or orphans. Let me have a quick look. Um, that looks fine to me. Okay, uh, no blank pages. Styles have been applied. Spacing is consistent. So we can save the document and we can go ahead and we can print off the word part. So this is the end of the word video guys. If you do join me for the next video, I will be going through the database part of this paper. I think the word was fairly straightforward. Um, it's something to watch out for. It's a pie chart. It's really easy to make your mistakes on the pie chart. Also um, the bullet points, um, making sure you remove the indentation on the left hand side. And obviously when you're format in this paragraph as well make sure you indent from both sides left and right side one centimeter and it would be also very easy to include this last paragraph as part of the columns so make sure you read all of the questions properly double check to see your name appears on every page yes it does and the page number changes as well right guys please thank uh, thanks for your time drop your comments below Good luck in your exams if you have exams coming up. Take care, guys. Thank you very much.